guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. Generally speaking, um, when I'm covering things that fall under the umbrella of stuff that we like to talk about here on this channel, uh, it takes me to at least two decades in the past, right? You know, usually most of the stuff I cover, if you're new here, most of the stuff I cover is really old. Um, this is not the case today. Every once in a very blue moon, when the moon is icy blue, I think that's a shade of blue, I will find a movie that's so obscure and or strange that even though it's not an old nostalgic movie, it's still exactly the kind of thing that belongs in this channel's catalog. The movie we're talking about today, of course, is Santa Girl. Santa Girl only came out last year on Netflix. Last Christmas, go back one year from now, I was sitting down looking for Christmas movies at about this time, trying to kick off my holiday cheer, and I got recommended this movie. And the trailer was so bad that I ended up watching the whole movie, just out of sheer curiosity. I, I couldn't look away. And it is now one of my favorite Christmas movies. In fact, when I watched this movie, you know, a year ago this channel didn't exist, and I remember saying, this movie is going to blow up. This is going to be one of those movies that every commentary YouTuber talks about, it's going to be like the big thing, and then it wasn't. And I was a little disappointed. <laughs> And I said, man, if I had a YouTube channel, I would totally make a video about this because we need to be talking about it every single day. So if you hate this video, you can go blame Danny Gonzalez or Curtis Connor for not making a video about it last year or else I wouldn't be here. Let's just launch into this movie because like I always say, I can't put into words how crazy this movie is. We just need to start going through it together. So here we go. Are you ready? Don't be scared. It's okay. I'm here with you the whole time. <laughs> So nothing's even happened yet, and I would like to draw your attention to the fact that this elf, she's one of the main characters, she's going down this fun little slide because this is the North Pole. They didn't even bother to get like the scuff marks off the wall before they filmed, which should set up your expectations nicely for this movie. This character, by the way, she's named Pep. Um, she is the long-suffering assistant to Santa's daughter. Made her favorite this morning. I should put her in a good mood. You know, she's just going about her morning chores and things. She's, you know, getting everything together. She's checking in with this Twitch streamer. Busy day. Thank you. And she's ready to be there for Cass, that's Santa's daughter, um, to get her through her day with a smile. And Cass, in return, is so mean to her, it drives me crazy. I hate you. Probably gonna cry about that later. She is just so like, she's she's just, she, ugh, Pep deserves better. He gets over a million letters a year. Did you know that? Fascinating. Poor, poor elf. <laughs> she's in a hostile work environment. Oh yeah, and Cass, Santa's daughter, she has magic. I don't know why it doesn't come into play or become useful at all in the movie. In fact, it leads to some pretty hilarious plot points, but I'll get to that later. You'll also recognize Jennifer Stone from Wizards of Waverly Place, if you were into that, if you were from my era of Disney Channel. I really want to give her props because she's really doing her best to to really like work with the script that she was given. You do know it's summer, right? I'm supposed to be on vacation. <laughs> like, she can't change the fact that Cass is a character. Cassie, she's written to be so unlikable. Like, she's grumpy all the time, and this little girl just wants her autograph, and she's so mean to her about it, she just doesn't care. Cassie, can I have your autograph? I'm here. Oh, let me also tell you about the other thing that drew me to this movie. Barry Bostwick is Santa, but he's like this capitalist bottom line, all about the numbers kind of Santa. Video game department needs to go into overtime again. No, uh, the more we pay in overtime, the less we have in our quarterly earnings. So that's weird. And he's not a good boss. Listen, elves need to make toys as much as toys need to be made. Like, the clauses just do not care about their workers at all. It's really very disheartening. So the whole Santa Claus conglomerate works 
half like a monarchy and half like evil corporation thing in, in any kid's movie you've seen. There's a line of succession. Once you take over, you'll see it all in one night, once a year. So Cass is about to have to take over the family business. And of course she doesn't want to do that. You're at the North Pole, you're in your father's workshop. Is this Santa's workshop? It looks like a Holiday Inn. A Holiday Inn because Santa Claus. They don't want some Santa girl. Hey, that's the name of the movie. Also, wouldn't it be kind of cool to have a, a girl Santa? I mean, nothing wrong with traditional Santa, but it'd be nice to have a little diversity, wouldn't it? Look around, people everywhere. Yeah, elves. Elves are people too. Kinda. Also, what the hell, Santa? Is that elf racism? Why is Santa prejudiced against his elves? Why was that something they made Santa do? Miss Cassie, you're not dressed. You know, and people say you're slow. Stop being mean to Pep. Just relax, okay? I don't really do that. Same, Pep, same. So Cassandra gets a letter from college, ooh, and scares poor Pep off the stairs. <laughs> it's very dramatic. I can't open it, you do it. Okay. No, I'll do it. That's fine too. No, you. Oh my god, pick one. This poor elf is gonna have a mental breakdown. You got in. I got in. Oh, I got in. But now she's afraid to tell her dad, because you know how parents hate it when their kids get into a good school and want to get an education, right? Meanwhile, Santa is at some kind of reception, mingling with all the other magical characters, I guess. This guy is the Tooth Fairy's son, and he does this weird thing where he floats two inches off the ground. It's very strange. So let's get down to brass fillings. Uh, inflation. So here's what I don't understand. What's the demographic of this movie? Because it seems like a fun kids movie, and then they have like these monologues about like business stuff and mergers. Teeth used to go for a quarter, now kids want 10, 20 bucks. I mean, what are we talking about? Am I right? Why? 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 Why is this in here? <laughs> Oh, but if you think the Tooth Fairy's kid and Santa talking about a business merger is weird, wait till you hear about this. I'm talking merger. My mother, the, uh, Tooth Fairy, she's single and ready to mingle. And I know your wife passed away. Hey, I know your wife died. I want to make out with my mom. <laughs> And why is that necessary for them to make a business merger? What business works like a 15th century monarchy? <laughs> so Cassandra shows up to this reception, which by the way, looks like it's happening in a locker room of some kind. And it's like, hey dad, I wanna go to college. And he's like, no, I don't value education. And she's like, please. And he's like, no, you're in an arranged marriage with Jack Frost's son. Oh, that's a thing, by the way. She's in an arranged marriage with Jack Frost's son. And then this Christmas, you're going to marry the Frost boy. I don't want to marry someone I've never met. And she's never even met him, which doesn't make any sense. Why would that be? <laughs> they spend all their time talking to all of their other business partners. What has she been doing? <laughs> so the next day he's like, okay, you can go to one semester of college if directly after that you come back and get married on Christmas day. It's always on Christmas day. And then you take over the family business. And she says, yes, she's cool with it. Even though I really think she got the short end of the stick here. She got the short end of the candy cane. <laughs> God help me, I'm going insane. And then there's this montage of her picking out clothes to where to college. And it's weird because it shows her like pulling things off of racks like a normal person, but then it also shows her doing magic. Again, I don't know why she has magic. Also, it looks like they had the camera on a very flimsy tripod or something because anytime she moves around in this one setup, the whole thing just kind of jostles. Hi! Whoa, nope, that's an elf greeting. Hi is what? <laughs> What does that mean? Oh, so now we meet my favorite character in the movie, Jack Frost. His son's gonna marry Cass, if you remember. And they kind of, for as like, not so great as like their sets and everything and like the lighting and most of the shots looks, in my opinion, they do a good job with him. Like he has this whole purple aesthetic. There's like this purple lighting on him all the time. Like he's got some cool like VFX makeup going on. It's very, it's nice, I like it. If this movie was about Pep and her facing adversity as a shunned elf in the Santa world, it might be a more compelling movie. Drop some LBs 
I'm no fashionista, but whatever you're doing, keep it up. Oh, and there's this plot line kind of about Santa losing weight. I don't know why that's in there. I realized you called me into your office and you've never done that before. Are you gonna fire me? No, no, no. Poor Pep just lives in fear of being fired. I feel so bad for her. So Santa tells her, hey, I'm gonna send you to school with Cass to kind of keep an eye on her. What's the deal? I'm not taking an elf with me to college. You have never been on your own before. I don't think Cassandra deserves help if she's gonna continue being mean to Pep, but anyway. Yeah, she'll be your valet, your maid, your bodyguard, whatever you need. <laughs> and she has to do even more work? What the hell? Also, couldn't they have given her better prosthetic elf ears? I don't mean to be nitpicky. I'm sorry. So they drop her off at school. Santa threatens all the boys on her floor. Don't smile at her, Trevor. I know where you live. You know, dad stuff. Oh, and this is another thing. They, like, legitimately have jump cuts in this movie. It's so small. Look at that, I've never seen that before. I mean, I have jump cuts in these videos because I'm a lowly YouTuber. This is a movie on Netflix. This whole thing is our room? How small and dingy are, are Pep's living arrangements that she's so excited about sharing this tiny little dorm? So she has unfair work conditions and insufficient living quarters? This girl needs a union. Oh, also he does that thing where he gives her a wad of cash and he's like, this is only for emergencies. And she's like, okay, I'm sure that's gonna last long. Just don't, just let him know how special you are. So after he's lectured her about keeping the family secret, about being Santa Claus's kid, he just poofs out of existence in front of this poor student. But then she gets hit with a frisbee and like, <laughs> gets knocked to the ground. And of course a boy shows up. Claus, like, like Santa Claus? Nope. You ready for classes to start? Oh, super excited. <laughs> Not in a weird way. So they're both pretty smooth. JR, that's his that's his name. He says he'll walk Cassie to get her school books. And then they ditch Pep, which isn't cool. But then this is my personal complaint. They show up at what they said was going to be a bookstore. It's clearly not. It's clearly a clothing apparel department of some kind. And I thought, okay, so, you know, maybe this is like after the bookstore or before the bookstore, but no, they cut over to the counter. There's that whole thing where I need books for classes and if I don't take them now, they're gonna get sold out. And this kid's trying to buy books. It's not a bookstore. And then later on, cause I thought maybe this is like one of those, like an all in one stop and shop place for the students, but they keep referring to it as a bookstore. Thanks for going to the bookstore with me. Oh, my pleasure. There's not one book on one shelf anywhere. You give me that amount of dollars in American currency and you get to take the book home. So this is Sam, he's another character. Sam doesn't have any money and he needs books for school because college books are like way more expensive than they need to be, right? So he's about to have to go without any school books when Cassie's just like, oh, $457 or however much money it was. <laughs> Will that do it? I'll pay for your books. And she just skips off into the abyss. You ditched me! You tell her, Pep. I can be a bit much. Don't you apologize for anything. What happened with you and the good looking boy? Well, um, we went to the bookstore. It's not a bookstore. It's not a bookstore. <laughs> can I get a hot chocolate with um, mini marshmallows? No marshmallows. What? I know, a coffee shop that doesn't sell tiny marshmallows. Okay, but like that is kind of a weird thing. Usually coffee shops have marshmallows. Hi everyone! I'm new here and I don't really know anybody, but I'd love to be friends with you. And um, so I'm gonna get you a hot chocolate. Buying friendship, that always works. Also, don't grab this poor minimum wage worker. How dare you? Cassandra, Claus. Present! How did she know he was calling on her? She just zapped into existence into that room. Hey, hi, hey, hi, don't move. Oh, you're worried about money. Oh, the broke kid. You're kind of weird, huh? They've both got such great social skills. So Cassie, there's an amazing party tonight and well, I need a date. No one talks to each other like a real person in this movie. Are you picking up on that? Is that just me? But then plot twist, JR is Jack Frost's son, which I have so many questions. I'm sorry, father. 
I wasn't expecting you. I don't know why he's also at college. Do you even remember why I sent you here? To make Cassie Claus fall in love with me. I don't... Because this is the whole conflict that she doesn't want to marry this kid. If she hits it off with this kid and she likes him, doesn't that mean that there's no more conflict? I think I'm just losing my mind. I like to keep an eye on my investments. Okay, but I've watched this movie like half a dozen times at least. And I'm gonna ask the question again. Why does anybody have to get married for a business merger? They do know that's not how business mergers work, right? They never explain this. Like they keep saying if Cassie doesn't go through with the with the marriage, then all of Kris Kringle Enterprises, that's the actual corporation's name, will revert to the Frost family? Why? What kind of contract do they have? You're having her followed? You're having her followed when I'm here spying on her? How dare you, father? And then he tries to get her to go out with him for the whole movie, and every time she's like, bro, I've got a boyfriend back home because she's engaged to Jack Frost's son, and he knows this because he's Jack Frost's son. So why doesn't he just tell her, hey, I'm the guy. I just wanted to get to know you. Can we can we go out for a little bit, please? Doesn't make sense. Make it make sense. So Cassie's talking to people at a party. She spits out her drink on this poor girl. Do you know what vodka is? JR poured me a cup of it and I took a big gulp because I thought it was soda. Because JR spiked her drink with vodka? That's not cool, JR. This is uh, my friend here though, so maybe don't spike her drink. Society frowns on that stuff, you know? I don't choose to live in the society. <laughs> no, but seriously, this is one of the few times that I will agree with Sam in this whole movie, so credit where credit is due. Good for you, Sam. Not cool, JR. <laughs> so then Jack Frost Sr., because JR is Jack Frost Jr., it's the JR, okay. He shows up to recruit Sam to spy on Cassandra. One, he does it in the most conspicuous way possible with snow and everything. And Sam just doesn't pick up on anything being weird in this situation, really. And two, why does he need to do that? His own son is there spying on Cassandra. Why does he need another person to spy on Cassandra? Does he not trust his own son? I would like to tell her father that a nice young man is keeping an eye on her. So Sam agrees to spy on Cass because he needs money to pay Cass back for books. I'm not entirely sure where that lands him on the morality spectrum, but it's probably not somewhere good. Wait, could I get some um, whipped cream? Yeah, do you want some sprinkles and like cherry on top too? Again, that's a pretty normal thing for an establishment that sells cake to have. So Sam shows up and is like, let me tutor you in calculus. And then just picks up her stuff and has her move to a different location with him. Don't leave a perfectly good piece of cake. Sam came back and got the cake. Second time, I'll give Sam props, but that's about it. So Sam's trying to figure out more about Cassandra. Where are you from? I'm from North. She's being very shady about like who she is and where she's from instead of just making something up if she's only gonna be there for the semester and she can't let him know who she is. She finds out that Sam wants to be a lawyer and why does he want to do that? My parents, uh, they sort of ditched me when I was little. Aw. I got in trouble, as you do. And there was this, uh, this lawyer woman. Lawyer woman. Who helped me, pro bono. So Sam's origin story is that a lawyer kept him out of prison, and now he wants to do that too? I want to help little kids who don't have anybody. Okay, that's cool. He, he wants to be charitable. So just the two of you then? You and your dad? No, there's three of us. Me, my dad, and his business. <laughs> and then after he gives her this heartbreaking story about growing up in the foster care system, she's just like, yeah, that sucks. My dad works too much. And then he asks her out and she says no, and this begins like a cycle of him not taking no for an answer and just continuously pushing for her to go out with him. I told you I'm unwooable. Mm -hmm. Everyone's wooable. Sam really starts to tiptoe across the line into that r slash nice guy territory and he really never comes back. Such a shame. Hello? Does anyone know where the math is? Is anyone out there? Can you imagine studying and you're just like, you need to you need to pass this test so you can keep your grades up because you don't want to lose your scholarship. And you're just like, your whole future rides on it and these two morons are just like in the library yelling about math. Miss Claus? Present! 
They didn't even bother to like use the special effects to get her in that time. It's as if this movie was shot in chronological order and they just began to give less and less of a shit as they got further along into the film. Also, this is just part of a montage, several montages of this movie where nothing happens. It's like now she's walking down the street. Now she's laughing with a boy. Now a girl that we don't know is going down a slide. <laughs> Thank you. You can't keep that though. I'm gonna keep it. Why are you even cold, Cass? You're from the North Pole. Oh, and I love this little clip. They're at a Halloween party because apparently even though it's not Halloween anymore, I still can't get away from harvest festivals. But anyway, Sam, who knows that Cass and JR are hanging out and Cass has told him multiple times that they're just friends and also that she's not really interested in going out with him. He walks into this party and just sees her standing next to him and is so dejected that he leaves. He's just like, I'm not your only male friend here. Here. Well, bye. Oh, and then this scene is glorious. So basically Sam tries to stop helping her in math because she won't go out with him. Very classy. And then this exchange happens, which is beautiful. Do you want to get a hot chocolate to celebrate? I'm fine. Buy my own hot chocolate, thanks. Sam, what's wrong? Nothing. I like you. I like you. Hey, you wanna go grab a drink or something? No, I wanna sulk off in the corner. Why are you so upset with me? Cause you won't go out with me. She just asked you to get a drink, dude. <laughs> she tells him that she's engaged to somebody else. They do a kiss. I've never been kissed before, so. I still haven't. You're losing points, Sam. Oh, and then she finally opens up to him and he calls her crazy. You can trust me. Um, Santa Claus is my dad. Okay, um, hey, I... <laughs> Good job, Sam. Which I don't understand this because, again, she has magic. Why couldn't she just poof them somewhere and prove that she's telling the truth? <laughs> oh, and then Pep sees Jack Frost Sr. just walking down the campus lawn, and he realizes that she's there and just runs away like Dracula. <laughs> Santa! <laughs> She said her dad is Santa Claus. Cassie Claus, funny, right? How is he not putting this together? This guy keeps showing up, making it snow inside. He's clearly magical, just appearing out of nowhere. And it's so hard for this guy to believe that his crush girl person is Santa's kid? You're talking to Jack Frost, dude. So the next day, word has gotten out around school that Cass claims to be Santa Claus's daughter and everybody's making fun of her. There's like memes going around, really cringy memes circa 2012. Remember this movie just came out last year. I don't understand. I mean, why would he do this? And she blames Sam because he's the only one that she told. It wasn't Sam, by the way. It was Jack Frost Sr. You probably know that. Um, but I love that detail because that means that Jack Frost was just sitting around making cringy old memes. <laughs> in his spare time for no reason. So she's like, what the hell, Sam? And he's like, I didn't do it, I swear. And then two minutes later, she sees him again. And she's like, what the hell, Sam? And he's like, I didn't do it, I swear. Didn't they just have that conversation? There was this old guy and he said he worked for your father. My father? And he tries to get her forgiveness either way by being like, no, 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 no. I didn't, I didn't post mean memes about you online. I was just spying on you and being paid to do it all semester. You were paid to spy on me? That's a good plan, Sam. I I'm going to the formal with JR. <laughs> oh, him? You don't know him. I know you. Ugh, Sam, you're killing me. <laughs> I mean, I'm no JR fan either, but come on, Sam. This is a little ridiculous. Uh, but then Pep goes to talk to Sam in a completely empty rec room and tells him that she saw Jack Frost and she thinks that he's the one pulling shit around campus. Elf, I'm her elf, personally assigned by Santa himself. And she also tells him that, you know, Cass is engaged to JR, it's Jack Frost's kid, and he just kind of starts believing at this point. That was inspiring, you're right. I don't know at what point he turns a corner, but he goes from like digging his heels in and not listening to Cass at all to just being like, I mean, I can get down with this whole Santa thing pretty easy. Oh, and then JR comes clean and is like, hey, I'm actually the guy that you're supposed to marry in a week. And up until now, she's been pretty happy with JR. Like, he hasn't done anything to upset her. 
You're who I'm supposed to marry? And now all of a sudden she just doesn't want to marry him? It's it's a little confusing. I mean, I don't blame her for not wanting to get married to anybody at 18, but like, it's hard to follow. And then he asks her to marry him right there, even though they're already engaged. And then Sam interrupts, cause he's Sam. And they get into a really badly choreographed fight. Fight! Everybody just runs over, like, fight, fight, fight. This, that's, that's not how people act. JR, ask me. And then she tells JR to ask her to marry him, and she says yes. It's all very convoluted. So now it's wedding day, and we're back at the North Pole, even though it has never and will never look like the North Pole. Santa comes in to try to have a heart-to-heart, -heart, but he doesn't tell her that she doesn't have to get married. She's just like, you still gotta get married, though. Love ya. And then she fixes his bow tie, and then it's not fixed again in the very next shot. You look beautiful. Where's that smile? Oh, and then Santa goes to get Sam, which is weird because you would think that if he was so inclined to get this wedding called off, he would have just told Cass not to go through with it, right? But instead he's like, no, I'm gonna jet set in a convertible that flies because I'm too good for my sleigh right now, I guess, and get this law student in his first semester to look over this contract to try to find a loophole so that we don't have to go through with the wedding. Are you paying your lawyers way too much money, or is that not something that a first semester law student should be able to do, Santa? Santa? I don't think we're on a first name basis yet. I love when he gets there because Sam's like, you're Santa, right? And he's like, we're not on a first name basis. And then two minutes later, he's like, Okay, Mr. Claus, I will help you for Cass. And he's like, call me Santa. Call me Santa. Really getting the hot and cold signals here, Santa. It's time. Jack Frost might be a terrible person in this movie, but that actor has a really cool voice. My dad is if curious. If the wedding I... doesn't begin immediately, the Claus family will be in breach of contract and all of Kringle industry will revert to Frost and Son. Any again, I don't know why that would be, but it makes Cass be like, okay, I have to go through with this. So she starts the wedding without her dad. You look nice. Thank you. I like how she doesn't say it back to him. And then this leprechaun with a very bad Irish accent starts marrying them. Elves, fairies, and the best of you, the leprechauns. But then as soon as she has gained the gumption to go through with her wedding, uh, she loses it and calls it off herself. We don't actually love each other. This is an emotional roller coaster. Stop everything! <gasps> Cassie already did! And then Santa shows up. Sam? And I, I guess Sam is there too. Where did he come from? Was he just standing directly behind Santa the whole time? And he has found some loophole, so yay, she doesn't have to get married. Although she already called off the wedding, so I don't know why it matters. They do a kiss. Jack Frost makes it even more awkward than it already was. Goodness, charity, those are things of the past. Yeah, fuck charity, am I right? <laughs> what? Oh God, we're almost, almost through this movie. I can, I, I can do this. Dude. The marriage is off. I don't know when Santa had a change of heart, but he did and I'm glad. I'm really sorry about this. Are you kidding? <laughs> No way am I ready for marriage. Then why didn't you say anything, JR? You could have said something. But I do kind of ship him with Pep. Kind of. She uses magic to shove him into a cake. What a waste of cake! That is a waste of cake. I'm with Pep, as usual. So later on, Sam and Cass are laughing and Cass falls somehow. Uh, and Santa meets a girl. Good for him. Want a cookie? Fresh from the oven. No, I'm on a low carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too late at night. I'm so sorry. Do you maybe want to be my girlfriend? Yeah. Wouldn't it be weird if she said no? That would be really funny. So it's Christmas Eve. Santa goes out to deliver presents like Santa does every Christmas Eve. And they end on this shot of Sam and Cass kissing in front of a window. And it's clear, it's so clear that it's like a CGI thing that they've put over a window so that they can show Santa flying off with the reindeer. But they didn't even do it right because you can see 
where the fake window stops and the real window still lives. <laughs> Who okayed this? <laughs> Who's responsible? And that's the end of the movie. I'm so sorry. I feel like I feel like I'm just like yelling at the camera, like more so than usual, because this movie just throws me for a loop, man. It's bizarre and I love it. And I've already watched it twice and it's not even December 1st at the time of recording this video. But I had to share it with you guys because no one's talking about it. We need to be talking about this movie every day. But my battery is dying. My voice is giving out on me. And I've cried from laughter so much that my makeup is running. So I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and anything and everything you do to support this channel. It means the world to me. Uh, if you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And ring the bell because my upload schedule is as chaotic as I am. And it will maybe tell you when I upload like half the time. But above all, remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Happy holidays, guys. It's gonna be a fun month. We're just getting started. <laughs>